What is up guys, this is Seth Kniep, Kniepin' It Real. Many of you guys have asked, how Seth do I source on a website other than Alibaba? Now I understand Alibaba is really nice to use. You can find tons of suppliers on there and it's very user friendly. But there's something people are missing and that is a website that isn't so popular, that's actually difficult to navigate, which gives you a huge advantage over the competition. I speak. 1688.com. 1688 is written in Chinese. Now, if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, Seth, I don't speak Chinese, not as a first language or second or a third or a 16th language, that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to do it regardless of that. But what I think will really help is before you get into this video, understand, I'm not just gonna talk to you about how to navigate the platform. I'm gonna show you how to find the product, vet the supplier, pay the supplier, get the product all the way to Amazon's fulfillment center. The entire thing. You're not just gonna learn 1688, I'm gonna show you how to get ahead of the competition by leveraging one of the most powerful sourcing websites on planet Earth. Here's why. 1688 was built specifically for retailers in China. It wasn't built for Americans or Russians or Brazilians or anyone else. Therefore, when you go to their site, if you can find a supplier, you can get sometimes much better prices and yet extremely good quality. I'll show you how to vet that. Because it was built for within China. Sort of like Alibaba is for the whole world. It's one of the biggest websites on planet Earth. Well, 1688 is for the Chinese businessmen and businesswomen, the owners of businesses there so they can source their products to sell to locals. I'm gonna show you how to leverage that. Number one, I'm gonna show you how to translate the website into English. You're gonna translate every single word. I'm gonna teach you Chinese and I'm joking. You just click a button and the whole thing is translated. Number two, I'm gonna show you how to find your product, the product you wanna source on this website. Number three, I'm gonna show you how to evaluate the listing. How do I know if this is actually a good product or not? I will show you. Number four, how to vet the supplier that you found on 1688. Number five, how to contact that supplier. Wait a minute. Did you say contact the supplier? It says I can't use their contact form if I don't have an account. And if that's what you're thinking, you are 100% correct. In fact, if you don't have a passport in mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, Japan, or South Korea, or any sort of ID for these countries, they physically will not let you open an account. So what do you do? I will show you a way around that. So you can not only contact that supplier, but negotiate with them. Number six, last but not least, I will show you how to pay the supplier and in a way that protects you from getting cheated or losing money over some kind of scam. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Translate 1688.com into English. Google Translate Chrome Extension. So you're gonna Google Google, click right here, and then hit add to Chrome. I'm assuming that you have a Google Chrome browser when you do this. You're gonna notice this little message pops up in the top right, that means it's now here. You can click on this little icon that looks like a puzzle, and you can even pin this. See that little pin? So now it stays up here on the top right. Now, watch what happens when I go to 1688. Let me refresh it, 1688.com, and it's all Chinese and boom, now it's English. See this message up here? I keep this box checked so it always translates Chinese simplified. You don't want Chinese traditional, it's way too complicated. Okay, so now I am looking at 1688. Now, you might be thinking, well Seth, I see a lot of Chinese characters there. Don't worry. The majority of it is translated and it's not bad. Some words are gonna look a little funny and funky, it's okay. You can still navigate with very decent accuracy as you do this. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to find your product on 1688.com. Now there are three ways to find products. Let's say your keyword is golf shoes. Number one is if you click this little camera button right here, you can upload a photo of golf shoes here and it will find you that product. Now, keep in mind, this is the least effective method because it's doing it based on the shape of the photo, 
and the designs on the photo. You search toaster as a photo, it could show you a microwave oven because they're kind of the same shape. Or you might do a yoga mat and it shows you a floor mat or even a case for a rifle because they also are the same shape. So you're very limited if you do that. Plus, you can't even use this option unless you have an account. And as I mentioned, unless you have an ID in one of the Asian countries I mentioned, that's not even an option for you. So let me move on to option number two. You can also find your product by using an English keyword. I kid you not, watch this. If I go over here and I type in golf shoe, I mean, the first time I tried this, which was a very long time ago, I didn't believe it until I tried it. And boom, look at this. I typed in an English word and it came up. That's pretty cool. But I do want you to notice something. See on the right side where it says a total of 48 related products? Okay, that could be a problem. There's only 48. There's supposed to be tens of thousands of suppliers on here. It's not as big as Alibaba, but it is still huge. So watch what happens when you use step number three. And that is where I use the Chinese version of golf shoes. So I just go to Google Translate English to Chinese. There it is. I'm going to double click, copy that, come back over here. And I'm going to paste the Chinese word for golf shoes into the search bar. Hit enter. And let's see what happens. So now look at how many we have now. We have almost a thousand products that came up because I used the Chinese version. Now, what's funny to me is, is I've noticed a lot of Americans, they don't even think of using the Chinese word. Well, the advantage of Google, you can do this. And now you have way more options to pick from. I go over here and I'm just going to start scrolling through and looking at the listings that popped up from searching that keyword. I'm going to go with the first one by PGM. Let's see, PGM Factory Direct Golf Shoes. Let's look at this one. Now, just by the photo alone, it's quickly telling me this is very close to the kind of product I want, which is great. Now, there's several things you need to notice about this. First of all, the price on the listing is not exact. In fact, most of the time, they're going to give you a little bit of a lower price than reality because they're trying to advertise. They want to suck you in. So never take a listing on 1688 at face value. It's very different than Amazon. You go to Amazon to buy something and if it says it's 1799, well, it's 1799. This is different. And keep in mind, 1688 is not the supplier. The supplier is posting their data on 1688. So the rules are very different than if you're an Amazon seller on amazon.com. So just looking right here, watch this. So I'm going to go over here to this one. So this tells me that this shoe or a pair of shoes, I don't think anyone would buy a single shoe, is 668 RMB. Now it is very possible that we could get the price that low if we were to order a certain minimum order quantity. So sometimes if you negotiate, let's say you were to order 2000 of these shoes, then that price listing is accurate. But a lot of the times they bring the price down to suck you in. Second thing I want you to notice is the MOQ, which stands for minimum order quantity. This is really important to understand when you source products. If you want to buy golf shoes and sell them on Amazon, you need to understand that the greater quantities you order, the lower the price is going to be per unit. That's the whole point of being a supplier or a manufacturer or a factory is their business model is based on volume. If it wasn't, they wouldn't exist. The business model from the business you, Amazon seller to the customer is based on what an individual wants. That's why you can charge a lot more. But if you're a supplier, you have to make money. Therefore, you got to do it in big volume. Well, this volume is kind of interesting. <laughs> Tells me that I can get two pairs or more in my order. This is unusual. Now, the reason it's allowing me to have such a low MOQ, just to give you perspective, most MOQs are like 500. 250 would be considered low. In other words, my first order, I could do a minimum of 250 products. This is telling me I can order two pairs. That's incredible. Well, one of the reasons is this is a very advanced shoe, as you can tell. After all, it's a golf shoe and it is pretty pricey. Not for you to buy because RMB 668, I mean, the RMBs as a general rule, you could say it's like one, it takes about eight RMBs to be one dollar. So it's not even close to that in dollars. But even then, it is still an expensive shoe at a manufacturing level. Lower price products tend to have bigger MOQs. 
higher price products tend to have lower MOQ. So if you go up on the price, you're going to go low on the MOQ. If you go up on the MOQ, you're going to go lower on the price. Remember that when you're working with manufacturers. Something else you need to be aware of. Just because they have these nice photos on here, look, when I click through these photos, this does not mean they're in stock. Again, 1688 is not the supplier, and the supplier is not 1688. 1688 is just the platform to help organize the trading of these goods. It's like a way to advertise or a platform for buyers and sellers to get on to do business together. So just because they have a black and white here, doesn't mean it actually is in stock, so you have to contact the supplier to confirm that. I just gave you an overview of the most important things to consider when looking at the listing. Now let's look at the supplier. Now how do you do this? Well, there's several very key steps I'm going to show you. The first thing you do is you scroll up here to the top and notice this bar at the top and it says company. I'm going to click on company. Now as I scroll down, this is giving me information on PGM, the company listed on 1688.com. I want to be sure that this company has existed for at least three years. The fastest way to do that is look for this word, established. Established. So if I'm going to go over here, I'm just going to go Command F. I'm going to type in established and boom, I can see these guys were established in 2000. Let me check that one more time to make sure there's, yep, okay. No, excuse me. That's when their golf product manufacturer, they were established in 2014. See where it says established with the colon then September 1, 2014. So they're at least seven years old. So they've definitely have passed the standard of a minimum of three years. Now, why does this matter? Well, scams don't last long and scammers do not like the long road. They like the short path. So those companies that continue to endure and keep going through great times and through hard times, those are the companies you can trust. But ones that just grab at the opportunity and then they disappear, those are scams. Therefore, I know that this supplier is much more likely to be trustworthy if they've been around for a longer period of time. The next thing I'm going to look at is employee count. I want to know that they have at least 50 to 500 employees. Now, why not less? I'll tell you why. If this company has, let's say, seven or eight employees, it is very unlikely that they're actually a manufacturer. They're more likely a trading company because you cannot produce products at a massive volume with just a handful of people. You have to have a lot of people. Therefore, this is a fast way for me to filter out the trading companies. Now, there is nothing wrong with the trading company. A lot of people say, oh man, I would never do that. I'm going to lose money. Hold on. Trading companies actually have a reason. There's a reason they exist. They are not scams. The reason I don't recommend it in this situation is the whole point of going to 1688 is to find a supplier, number one, that most people can't find, and number two, that offers a better price. When you're dealing with a trading company, you're dealing with a middleman. In other words, you're not buying from the factory, you're buying from someone who's buying from the factory, which means if they buy it from the factory for 100 RMB, which is Chinese UN, Chinese dollars, then they have to up the price, let's say, to 125 RMB so they can make money off of that before they sell it to you. So let's look at the employee account. All I have to do is search employee. Okay, here we go. Check this out. So I've scrolled down on the left side. Notice the employee count here is five people. This is probably a trading company. I like that they've been around for a while. That's great. They're probably not a scam, but they only have five people working there. And if you look at this picture, and I don't mean this in making fun of it, but it looks like they're in sort of a shipping container. It doesn't look like a well-established factory. These are people at their desks negotiating. They're kind of doing what you're doing right now, what I'm doing. They're just being a trade person. It's like there's you and there's the factory, but you can't talk to the factory. You got to talk to these people in the middle who are at their computer working. They're, they're office people. They're not build products people. Therefore, I would not be interested in going with this company. Now, there's something else I want you to be aware of. I talked about seeing, making sure that they're at least three years established. I talked about making sure they have from 50 to 500 employees. What if they have more than 500 employees? The reason I tend to shy away from companies that large is because they tend to do massive orders only. In other words, their MOQs, as you probably guessed, are super high, like 5,000. If you are starting out with a new product, you probably don't want to order five to 15,000 of your first batch. 
What if something goes wrong? What if the market changes? That's a, that's a risky venture. The only time you're going to do that is after you've been selling it for a while and the market has proven itself, then it makes sense to order that mini. Additionally, if you work with a really large company, they tend to be less flexible. They tend to have more bureaucracy and red tape, and therefore you're just another cog in the system. So if you're looking for a little more custom treatment, but they're big enough to know they're a factory, I like the 50 to 500 rule of employees. The last thing, the third thing I'm gonna look at is the size of their building. Now, almost no one talks about this, but this is important. I want to know that they're at least 200 square meters. Just to give you perspective, 160 square meters is about the size of a three bedroom house. Now, why does size of the building matter, Seth? I mean, is that relevant at all? It is. Factories need room. It's another way to filter out the trading company from dealing with the direct manufacturer. And I'll show you how you can do that. If I just search here, um, M2, boom, look at this. Office area, 160 meters squared. That is a reason I would not be interested in going with this particular supplier. There is one more thing I'm gonna ask you to look for when you are looking at a supplier that you found on 1688.com. And that is called delivery guarantee. Watch, if I just command F and I type in delivery, here it is right here, boom. Now, why is this so important? And the easiest way to see this is you, they give you this little symbol. This is official. This isn't something the supplier just slapped onto the website because they thought it would look cool. It's actually something that 1688 has instituted across the board. What it means is this supplier commits to taking 3000 RMB and depositing it into an escrow account before they ship the product. And they can't take that money out until you say, I am satisfied, I received my product. It's a way of testing their integrity. Again, this is a great example of a high integrity company just based on my what I can see, they would not put that on there because 1688 enforces this. They would not put that on there if they were not a trustworthy company. They're a trading company, I'm not interested, but you can use that to filter out the bad actors or at least the ones that you wouldn't trust as much or who don't actually put their money where their mouth is. Step number five, you're gonna contact the supplier and negotiate. This is the part where a lot of people just kinda stop and they're like, okay, up to this point I can do this, but how in the world do I click on this little blue raindrop dude on the page that's supposed to put me into conversation with someone who doesn't speak a word of English? I will show you how, watch this. So here I am on their website. I'm gonna go back here to the product. Let me just go back and I want you to watch this, you guys. Now see this little blue bouncing raindrop guy with two eyes and he's just kind of bouncing up and down. The reason I cannot use that is because I am not registered on 1688.com. I have a staff members in China who are, but I personally am not. Why is that? Because I don't have an ID from one of those Asian countries in order to validate me doing that. Therefore, I literally physically cannot get into this chat. And even if I did, they're expecting someone to speak to them in Chinese. Therefore, they won't speak to you in English. They're not even, it's not, it's off their radar. Even if they do speak in English, they're not thinking that way. So it is not an option. And that's the most common way someone in China would source from 1688.com is they would use that little bouncing blue guy. So what do we do? I'll tell you exactly what to do. By the way, this is called Ali Talk. By the way, Alibaba owns 1688. Like Alibaba is so huge. And what Jack Ma has done going from a school teacher to what he's done today is absolutely mind blowing to me. Here's what you do. You go over here, you scroll up and you click on contact. Uh, guys, this is my very favorite part. I want you to notice that under contact, it says mobile number. Well, thank you, PGM. You just gave me your cell phone. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that mobile number and I'm gonna go over to my phone. I already have WeChat on my phone, but you can easily get WeChat. Just get it on an Android or the App Store. Just search it, it's We, W-E, chat and install it. You may have to confirm with a friend or someone else who already has it in order to get in. They have raised the standard on that over the last few months. However, let me show you how this works. It's super cool. I go over to contacts and I click in the upper right corner where it shows that little silhouette black line outline of a person with a plus next to it. 
And right here, I'm gonna paste in that mobile number I pulled from their site, and then I hit search in the bottom right corner. Aha, look at this, PGM. I found them. I now have them on WeChat. Do you know what's amazing about WeChat? You send something to them in English, they take their finger, they push down on that message, a little box pops up, and it says, translate to Chinese, so they can read it in Chinese. Then if they send something to you in Chinese, you do the same thing. You take your finger, you push it down on that little message, and guess what happens? It translates into English. I just added this good chap, and boom, hopefully, PGM will accept my request to be a friend. Now that you have them on WeChat, you have the most powerful application on planet Earth for communicating with suppliers internationally, especially in Asian countries. It is kind of like the way WhatsApp is in Europe, WeChat is in Asia. Do this. In the description below, we include a link to full, simple, but clean and clear training on how to leverage WeChat for all it's worth. It's jod.com slash WeChat. I included it in the description below. Now that you have them on WeChat, assuming they accept your friend request, I'm gonna walk you through a few steps on how to negotiate with the supplier. First of all, you're gonna message them exactly what you want. You need to be very specific. Don't just say green, give them the Pantone code. Don't just say I need it to be, you know, long. Say I need it to be 20 centimeters. Don't say I need it to have Velcro. Tell them what kind of density of Velcro you want. You gotta be really specific. So when you send them that first message, you're gonna introduce yourself, say something like, hey, my name is Seth, I represent this company, we are looking to source a new line of golf shoes. I would like to know if you have the capacity to build this product. And then you just do a bullet point list of exactly what you want. The more specific, the better. You don't just say stainless steel, you say 319L stainless steel. The more specific you are, number one, it's gonna filter out people who aren't very good at the suppliers who aren't very precise. Number two, it will help guarantee that they produce exactly what you're looking for. Once you do that, then you're gonna to move to negotiating. This is even before you got a sample. You say something like this. Look, before we go back and forth spending a lot of time trying to figure out details, I would like to know, assuming they can build this, if I was to have you manufacture 2,500 of these, what would be your cost? And do this with three to four suppliers. What will happen is you'll end up contacting about 10. It'll reduce you down to three to four who actually can build what you want and have a competitive price. And if you already know how much you're gonna sell this for, and you already know the fees, something we teach in depth at justonedime.com slash freedom or jod.com slash freedom, you already know what your limit is. You know what your costs are. You don't go into this blindly saying, hmm, that looks cool, I'll try that. You already know how much you're willing to spend on this pair of shoes so that you know your profits are good. That means you had to calculate that in advance. We teach that in our membership at jod.com slash freedom. So you tell them exactly what you want, you give them the whole list, and as they look at that and you also say how much, you know, if you were to do 2,500, how much would this cost? You quickly filter out people who are not worth working with. Do not negotiate on samples. It is one of the biggest rookie mistakes a lot of new Amazon sellers make. If you're going to negotiate on a sample, my first question is, why are you? You might say 50 bucks. How is that going to help you? You're trying to make millions. Negotiating in samples, it'll make you look like a rookie. They will respect you less and you will lose negotiating power. Negotiate on quantity. That's where you make money. Would you rather save 50 bucks on a sample or $5,000 on a large future order? You see the difference? Now, what do we mean by negotiate in quantity? The way you negotiate is you say, look, if I buy 100 of these, what's your price? And they say, well, that's 14 RMB. Okay, cool. What if I buy 250? And they say, okay, well, that's gonna be 13.5 RMB. And you say, can we do it down to 12.75 RMB? And you ask twice. Always ask twice. If you ask three times, you become annoying. But if you only ask once, again, you look like a rookie. Now, if you're an American, I've noticed this about Americans, they're a little more hesitant to negotiate because we don't live in that kind of culture. Don't feel ashamed for that. Just understand, you can haggle a little bit with the Chinese. They'll respect you for it. They like it. Another key is send them a picture of what you want them to build. This picture could come from 1688 website. It could come from a product you found on Amazon. It even could come from a 3D model from a product engineer who's building this product for you. If you send a picture, it makes things so much more clear. Oh, that's what they're looking for. 
So you're gonna still include the specs, but you also send an image. Once you've narrowed it down to three to four suppliers who will give you prices you want and who can definitely build it, at least what they say verbally, that's when you say, okay, I'd like to order a sample. When you receive these samples, this is where it gets fun. You get to test the heck out of that sample. I mean, drop it, put water on it, test the product to its limits, figure out what it takes to break that product. Do what it's supposed to do, but put it in an extreme level condition. That way you know the quality. And what's gonna happen is one or two of these suppliers will no longer make the cut, and now you're down to one to two suppliers, which is kinda cool because if you have two, you have more negotiating power. Now don't overdo it. If you keep saying, well, this supplier is gonna give me a better price, and you do that too much, they're just like, you know, I don't wanna deal with you. You could do it once or twice, but do it wisely. Once you have figured out, okay, this is the sample I love from one or two, maybe three suppliers, this is where you request differentiation. Okay, here's my request. I would like this to be three centimeters thinner. I would like this material to be thicker. I would like this to be longer. I want a more, a stronger spring on this hinge. What is the, the per centimeter square inch pull on that? You start getting into details on how you want to differentiate your product. I need a brighter light bulb. I need a longer cord. I need a heavier body, whatever it is. This is where you get specific. Now that you have the sample, your confidence is strong, they can do what they say because they just sent it to you, this is where you negotiate your differentiation. And that is when you make your final decision, okay, which one of these suppliers should I go with? Now here's the beauty of it. You did all of this on WeChat. Everything right here. In fact, when you first send them that message, tell them you found them on 1688.com. That immediately puts in their mind, oh, Okay, they're expecting 1688.com prices. That's a good thing. As I mentioned before, you can't search for a product uploading an image even though they have that option on 1688.com unless you have an account. You don't have an account if you don't have an ID in one of the Asian countries I mentioned earlier. The same is true for payment. Even though payment options on 1688 are awesome, and if you do have an agent who's looking for products for you, one of the best ways to vet them is say, do you use 1688.com? And they say, yes. When was the last time you did? Get that answer, okay. How often, what percentage do you source there versus Alibaba? If there's a strong percentage where they source in 1688, here's the beauty. When you pay in 1688, trade assurance like on Alibaba is built in. The money goes into escrow automatically. That, that supplier doesn't touch that money until you said, I'm happy with the product. Okay, so that's great, but I can't use it myself, so and I don't have an, an agent, so what do I do? I'll tell you exactly what you do. Once you have figured out exactly what the supplier is gonna send you, what the cost is gonna be, you're gonna request what is called a PI, also known as a pro forma invoice. Pro forma or an invoice gives you the quantity, the kind, and the terms for the product. For example, I want 600 of these with these details, these spec specifications, and it will cost me this much. Before they send you the PI, request that they do the 3070 deal, this 3070 terms. What it means is you're gonna pay them 30%. You're gonna wire the money to them through an international transfer. It's gonna cost you between 25 and $40 of a fee for sending the wire. Now that scares people because once you send a wire, say bye-bye. There's just about no way to get that wire back. You can do a trace on the wire, which can take weeks, sometimes months, but there's really just about no way to get it back. However, keep in mind, you haven't sent them all the money because you're gonna wait until they manufacture the product. After they manufacture the product, you're gonna contact a product inspection person or company. And by the way, within our private community, jod.com slash freedom, we have lots of references for amazing product inspection companies and you tell them exactly what you want. You send them the same list of specifications that you sent that supplier. So they go to the factory with a video camera. Thank God that we have mobile recording these days and all you generation these are like, what are you talking about? I grew up with it. <laughs> and you, they go to the, the factory and they walk around and they film what's going on. They, they open the box, they take out the product, they test it. They slap it, they throw it in the air, they drop it on the ground, they pour water on it. They do whatever they need to do to test exactly what you're looking for. And then they send you sometimes up to 25 page inspection report. Now I know this sounds so like out there and complicated to newbies, but listen, it's not difficult. If you find a great product inspection company, 
They are happy to do this for you. It will cost you anywhere from $200 to $500. Well, that's a lot of money. Not when you're talking about the thousands you can make selling on Amazon. If you already know your profits, you already calculated that into your profits and you understand the cost of building a business. They send you the inspection report. You look at it and you're like, this looks good. This looks good. Ooh, that's not good. You go back to, hey, supplier. Yes? You want your 70%, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the hinge on these is too weak. It snaps. Oh, well, you know, I think that, uh-uh. Look, right here. Remember before I told you to be super specific? You have to tell them the material, the size, the weight, everything. Because you were specific and it's on the PI, you have leverage, baby. And you use that leverage. You don't send them a single dime. Yes, I use that coin term intentionally until they fix the freaking problem. Most suppliers I've dealt with don't have a problem. They do a great job. You know why? Because they already know that the 3070 deal, that those terms already holds them accountable. They're going to do a good job. They're not going to cheat because they want the remaining 70% of the money that you owe them once they deliver the product as it needs to be. So if there's a problem, you make them fix it. Then you have their product inspection company go back and check and make sure they did a good job. And then you do one more thing before you send them the 70%. No one talks about this. So I'm going to talk about this. It's called a commercial invoice. A commercial invoice is standard when you're dealing with international trade. The seller of the product, the exporter, is responsible to issue you a commercial invoice so that you, the receiver of the product, the importer, can have it. It's very similar to a bill of lading that goes with the shipment, but it has a little more detail on it. It's actually a legal document. And do you know why it's so important? There are two reasons. Number one, if the IRS ever audits you because you make so much money selling on Amazon, you have proof that you spent this money on products. Therefore, they're not going to tax you on your revenue. They're going to tax you on your profit. You have your revenue. You subtract your expenses. What's left over is what you get taxed on. Number two, and even more frequent, Amazon's most favorite request <laughs> is will you send me a commercial invoice? If for some reason you get a complaint against your product, someone says, ah, oh, it's not authentic. I never forget these glass bottles we sold for a while and they did really well. And someone said it's inauthentic glass. I was like, I've never heard of fake glass. They're not saying it's plastic. It's definitely glass. It was so silly. But this does happen. And if Amazon, or if you're trying to get ungated in a new product category, or if there's a new program Amazon rolls out and you want to be part of it, but they need a little more validity that you are legit in what you're doing, you've got to give them that commercial invoice. And the only time where you have leverage to get it is right before you pay that 70%. So tell them, send me the commercial invoice, then I will pay you the remaining 70%. Wait a minute. They speak Chinese. You speak English. What do we do? Don't worry about it. Have them send it to you in Chinese. Transfer it over to a spreadsheet. Are you serious? Isn't that pretty much like custom typing up my invoice? Yeah, but you can do this. It is a legitimate commercial invoice. In fact, when you send it to Amazon, you're going to send both copies. You're going to send them the Chinese version, but you're also going to send them the English version that you have someone translate for you. Because I have a hunch that most people who work at Amazon don't speak Chinese, especially those people who are requesting those commercial invoices. Once that is done, that's when you wire them the remaining 70% and you ask them for a tracking number so they can ship that product all the way to Amazon's Fulfillment Center and you make money. I have one question for you. What is your favorite platform to source from? If you found help in this video, will you do me a favor? Will you give it a thumbs up? If you give it a thumbs down, I still love you. But will you give it a thumbs up? And subscribe because if you subscribe and hit that little notification bell, Every single time we come out with more content, you will be notified and we will keep on delivering it. You have an awesome day.